All right, everyone, welcome to Acceleration and AP Physics C. All right, let's go into our first problem. A car moves with a constant acceleration of three meters per second squared. Which statement below is true? So a lot of people get really confused by this because they, they look at this and they're like, what is seconds squared? That, what does that even mean? And I want you guys to think of this a little bit different. This is the same thing as three meters per second per second. So this is short, the squared is short for just, just seconds times seconds squared. So three meters per second per second. So I want you to think about that. A car moves with a constant acceleration of three meters per second per second. Which statement below is true? The horse velocity doesn't change. The horse moves three meters every second. The horse of velocity increases three meters every second. The horse of velocity increases three meters per second every second. And it's gonna be this last one, D. What this means is every second, it's getting three meters per second faster. So the first second is three meters per second. The second second, six meters per second. Third second, nine meters per second, and so on and so forth. Every second, it's getting three meters per second faster. All right, let's look at this next problem. So under which scenario does a car, does the car speed increase slash dec and decrease? Uh, so let's look at this. Uh, we have scenario A, B, C, and D. And we want to know which scenario is the car in car speed increasing and when the car speed is decreasing. So when you're looking at this, I hope that you think you can see that when the velocity and the acceleration are going in the same direction, that means that it is getting faster and faster, meaning the speed is increasing. So we can see that for part A and part D. Okay, in B and C, we see that the velocity and the acceleration are in different directions, which means that it is slowing down, okay? Uh, so important to know when it's, uh, acceleration and velocity going in the same direction, that means it's speeding up. And when acceleration and velocity go in a different direction, that means it's slowing down. Now, in which scenario does the car have a negative acceleration? So a lot of times people think, oh, if it's slowing down, that must mean negative acceleration. However, that's not true. That is sometimes true, but not always true. It's always going to be true that the acceleration is going to be negative when acceleration is either pointed down or it's pointed to the left. Uh, so in which scenario does the car have a negative acceleration? When it's pointed to the left. Okay. Um, I, I should say that that's not always going to be the case. I mean, you can say that if it's going left or it's going down, that's going to be positive. And then if it's going up or to the right, that's going to be negative. But that's rarely ever done, and I feel like that really confuses people. So the direction is what matters. And many times the direction of left and down, that's what's going to be counted as negative. Okay? If that confuses you, just know that left and down is negative. <laughs> All right. Now let's check at this. If something is moving with a constant non-zero acceleration, so constant acceleration, which statement is accurate about its motion? Okay? Uh, in equal times, its velocity changes by equal amounts. In equal times, its speed changes by equal amounts. In equal times, uh, no, what? It has a constant slope if you were to draw its graph of position versus time. Uh, it has a horizontal line if you were to draw its graph of velocity versus time. In equal times, it moves equal distances. Okay, so we should know that it's getting faster and faster as time goes on. So if that's the case, in equal times, it's not going to be moving equal distances. It's going to be moving more and more distances as time uh, with the time. But what we should know is acceleration, the formula for acceleration is the change in velocity over time. So that's what this is. In equal times, its velocity changes by equal amounts. If something, again, is going three meters per second squared. That means every second, it's getting three meters per second faster. So it's going to be the velocity changed by equal amounts. Not the speed, it, is, it has to do with velocity. Okay. All right, uh, let's look at this problem. A horse starts from rest and accelerates the constant acceleration of one meter per second squared for three seconds. The horse continues for five seconds at constant velocity. Uh, how far does the horse travel from the starting point? Okay, so let's just kind of draw this out a little bit. So what we should know is it starts from rest. So that means at the beginning it's not moving. And then it accelerates for three seconds with an acceleration of uh, one meter per second squared. 
And then the horse continues after this for another five seconds, moving at a constant velocity. So whatever velocity it retains over here, it goes for that velocity for another, whoops, five seconds, not five meters per second, five seconds. How far has it traveled? So let's first figure out how far it travels for this distance here. We know initial velocity is zero, time is three, acceleration is one meter per second squared. And then now we're looking for displacement. So what we should do is we should look at a formula sheet and see what formula has all four of these variables. And we're going to see it's this formula. Displacement is equal to V initial T plus one half A T squared. So this is going to be equal to V initial, which is zero plus one half, and then T becomes zero because this anything multiplied by zero, zero. One half A, which is one, T, which is three squared. So it's going to be nine times one half. So this is going to be equal to 4.5 meters. So we know from here to here, that's going to be equal to 4.5 meters. Now we want to find out how far is it going to go the next five seconds. Okay. Uh, the thing is, even though it has a constant velocity now, that means acceleration is equal to zero, we don't know what this velocity is. So we have to figure out how fast is this horse moving after it's been accelerating for uh, three seconds. Uh, there's a few ways we could do this. What we could do is we could find this final velocity. So let me just do it that way. And as you know, looking at my equation, uh, I can do final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus AT. Final velocity is what we're looking for. Initial velocity is zero, acceleration one, and time is three seconds. So I can say that, oh, okay, at the end of this, it's going three meters per second. So now I know it's going for a constant velocity of three meters per second for a time of five seconds. Acceleration is zero. And now we can find out what this displacement so we can say that if we try to find out, okay, if we have all these, these three pieces of information and we're looking again for displacement, let's look at what formula has all four of these. And we again see this the same formula. Displacement is equal to V initial T plus one half A T squared. So this can be equal again to, but now velocity initial, it starts with three and it goes for five seconds plus one half, but the acceleration is zero. Uh, so this is going to be 5 squared, but this all just turns to 0 because it's 0. And it's going to be 15 meters. So now we can do 4.5 plus 15, and this is equal to 19.5 meters. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, let's look at this problem. A ball is moving to the right. It has an acceleration of 0.1 meters per second squared in the opposite direction of its motion. The ball has a velocity of 4 meters per second after rolling a distance of 6 meters across the floor. What was the initial velocity? So something like this, there's a lot going on. I want to draw how it looks like. So we see that this ball is moving. It goes 6 meters. Uh, and we can see while it's moving, after it has traveled 6 meters, it's now going 4 meters per second. We also know that while it's rolling, it's going the acceleration in the opposite direction is 0 0.1 meters per second squared. So now we want to figure out what is this initial velocity. Okay? So we have three pieces of information. We have displacement, 6 meters. We have the final velocity, 4 meters per second. We have the acceleration, 0 0.1 meters per second squared. I'm going to call this negative because it's going in the uh, negative direction. And we're looking for initial velocity. Now we want to see which formula or which equation has all four of these variables. And we can see that this equation here has all four of those variables. So let's start to plug things in. 4 squared, uh, V initial squared, that's what we're looking for, plus 2A, negative 0 0.1, displacement 6. Um, okay, so let's do this. 16 is equal to V initial squared plus, let me just do the math for that, 2 times 0 0.1 times 6, we get negative 1.2. Um, so then 17.2, and then the square root of that, and we get 4.15. V initial equals 4.15 meters per second. All right, and that's how you do that one. Okay, 
Um, anything I should say about this? Anyway, just take your time with it. It's just important to get three variables. Once you have three variables, then and you and you know which variable you're looking for, you should now look for which equation you're going to use in order to find the fourth variable. Or I believe this might be the last one. A car is speeding. Uh, a car is speeding, moving with a constant velocity of 30 meters per second when it passes a stationary police car. If the car delays one second before starting to chase the car, with what acceleration must the, must the police car have to catch the speeding car by 300 meters? Okay, so let's again draw this out because there's a lot going on. 300 meters. We have the speeder here. And I'm going to draw the speeder like over here. Okay, the speeder is going with a constant speed of 30 meters per second. And then we have the police car over here. The reason I drew the police car back here is because it says if the police car delays for one second before starting to chase. So uh, he starts going one second after, meaning this has a head start. Okay. And we want to know if they get caught over here, uh, what does the acceleration of this have to be? Okay. All right, so let's think about this. So this is a little bit complicated. Whenever we have a complicated problem like this, we want to think about, all right, what other piece of information do we know? One thing that we know is, uh, so if this car doesn't, if the police car doesn't move until one second after, we know if this has been going for 30 meters per second, this has a 30 meter head start before this police car starts moving. Another thing we know is it's going to be moving 270 meters before uh, the police car catches up, okay? So this car is going to go 270 meters before this police car catches up. So one thing that we can find, uh, also we know that the police car has initial velocity of zero because it just, it was stationary. Um, okay, so next thing we know, uh, when we look at the police car, if we want to find out how long it takes for get from here to here or or anything what we need to we don't know what the time is however we know how long it's going to take to get from here to here is the same time the speeder is going to take to get from here to here so now let's look at the speeder so the speeder has a uh, initial velocity 30 meters per second and it's constant uh, and since it is a constant, that means its acceleration is equal to zero. And we also know it's going to be going a distance of 270 meters. Now we can find out how long it takes to get from here to here, which is the same amount of time of how long it's going to take the police car to get from there to there. So now let's look at which equation has all four of these variables. We can see displacement equals V initial T plus one half AT squared. Displacement, which is 270. V initial, which is 30, time, which we're looking for, plus one half A, again, zero, time squared. This all turns to zero. And we can now see time is equal to 270 divided by 30. Whoops, 270 divided by 30. And we get nine seconds. So now we know the police car takes nine seconds to get from here to here. Now let's figure out what the acceleration is. So we know initial velocity of the acceleration. We know that the displacement of the uh, police is 300, and we know it takes 9 seconds. Now let's find what the acceleration is. So we want to look at which uh, equation has all four of these variables. And it's the same equation. Displacement is going to be initial t plus 1 half at squared. Displacement 300, v initial is 0, so that all is 0, plus 1 half a, so that's what we're, what we're looking for, time 9 squared. Now we can find acceleration, 300 times 2 divided by 9 squared and we get 7.41 meters per second squared. That one was pretty tough. However, just take it a step at a time, draw it, for, especially for these harder kinds of problems, and trust. Tr just try to see, just try to get more and more information. The more and more pieces you have to the puzzle, the easier and easier the solution becomes. Okay, so just take it one step at a time as you guys do. <laughs> a ball is kicked and moves along a linear frictionless hill of ice. Which statement about it is uh, about its acceleration is true? Okay, so we can see that this is frictionless. So we let let's look at this ball. Oops. 
So this ball is going to go up this hill, and then it's going to come back down. So uh, it will travel at constant velocity with zero acceleration. We know that can't be true because we know it's going to be slowing down when it goes up and speeding back up when it goes down. So it's not going to have a constant velocity. It will have a varying acceleration along the hill. So, okay, the acceleration is going to be changing along the hill. Okay, could be. It will have the same acceleration both up the hill and down the hill. Okay, maybe. It will have a certain acceleration up the hill, but a different acceleration when it comes back down the hill. Okay, maybe. So, it will have a varying acceleration. So, if this is a linear hill like this, we know that the acceleration isn't going to change. It's going to have the same amount of acceleration so it's going to be slowing down as it goes up at the same rate it's not like it's going to it's not like a hilly thing like this so it's not going to be changing its acceleration so it's not that so it will have the same acceleration both up the hill and down the hill so a lot of people might feel like uh this is actually the correct answer because even though it is going to be slowing down as it goes up and speeding up as it goes down the acceleration is always pointing in one direction, and that's this way, down the hill. As it's going up, it's slowing down, and as it's going down, it's uh, speeding up. Uh, it's not going to change directions, so it can't be D. Okay, But it's going to have a constant acceleration, uh, both pulling it uh, down the hill. Okay. Alright guys, uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you with the next one, with Freefall.